next news on the football circuit, we've got um, an announcement or some info regarding Rafael Varane, the centre back from Real Madrid, that's been heavily linked with United. Obviously, um, you know, being a United fan, you would know, or being a fan myself of United, most people would be aware that we're crying out for a commanding centre back to play alongside Harry Maguire. Even though Harry Maguire was signed as a commanding centre back, but we move, we move, we move, we move. But of course, over the period of last season, we both we basically got to understand that maybe Harry Maguire isn't the kind of defender that we all thought he would be and he does maybe he's not as transformational as like a Virgil van Dijk was for Liverpool who basically came in and was able to kind of lift the game of every other defender that was already there um, in a different sort of way but Harry Maguire doesn't necessarily have the pace or the organizational skills to do so so you need somebody to complement him and usually the best partnerships especially defensive partnerships are usually people that can kind of make up for the other person's deficiencies right if one person's really strong in the air the other person's really good in the feet if one person's really slow, the other person's really fast, one person's really reactive, the one person's very um, patient, right, and can kind of t t uh, kind of nick the ball off somebody, like I'd imagine, like a Jared Pique is a good example, he needs somebody next to him that's probably a little bit more tenacious, a little bit more aggressive in the tackle, whereas he can be a little bit more, you know, um, a little bit more cute and flick the ball off you and play the ball out from the back, it's good to have somebody like a commanding centre back, like a, you know, like a Puyo, how was he was back in the day, he was like all action, in a sort of like a John Terry-esque way, those are really good partnerships, so we've basically seen that that works, but obviously the issue, only problem I have with this rumour is that throughout last season, Season. even though Eric Bailly gets injured a lot there was a period where he wasn't injured but still it seemed as if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer preferred playing Victor Lindelof who clearly isn't the best partner for Harry Maguire I'm still a fan of Victor Lindelof I think I'm one of the only ones that still thinks there's a decent defender in him I think you play him if he was to ever sign for a club like Barcelona for instance or somebody else that plays from out the back with three defenders I think he'd look fairly decent I think he looked fairly decent for Sweden in the Euros for instance but I just think when he's played in a two in the back four his deficiencies come out and obviously playing in the Premier League where it's very aggressive the defenders back into you there's loads of balls there in the air and you know one thing that Victor Lindelof struggles with is dealing with the balls in the air heading the balls not really one of his strengths but throughout the entire of last season even though we knew Harry Maguire had the deficiencies we keep Solskjaer still persisted with playing um, Lindelof over Bailly now that might be just a purely on a confidence and trust thing he might just say I don't trust Bailly to stay fit so I'm just going to play Victor Lindelof regardless or it might be the fact that he actually thinks Victor Lindelof is a better defender than Eric Bailly which is concerning or he thinks it's a better fit with Harry Maguire which is concerning so with the Rafael Ref 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 Varane thing, I think there is no danger that happening because of his profile, right? He's such a top class or well-regarded defender coming from Real Madrid. It's very unlikely that he's going to be playing second fiddle to, second fiddle to Victor Lindelof. He's definitely going to be signed with the hopes that he would play alongside Harry Maguire, right? And so it's a big name. He's a former Gal he'll be a former Galactico. You know, they can sell it branding. He's won a World Cup, blah, 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 right? I'm sure there's a lot of things that can tie into that or that would back up that point. But the only thing I say in terms of United fans getting giddy over this is that number one, I'm a bit concerned that a Real Madrid player of his caliber, of his at his age, would be up for joining United at the stage at where we're at, at the moment. Swapping Real Madrid, where you're legitimately challenging for the title every season, you're challenging for the Champions League, you're actually in contention of winning domestic cups. Um, you usually got the best managers, the best coaches, the best players playing around you. It just seems like a bit of a drop to come to United. For someone like him especially at his age because he's at 28 29 or something right he's just under 30 so you would imagine he hasn't got another big move after him after this in him probably he'll probably still be able to command a good enough wage in the continent but in terms of winning trophies this is probably one of his kind of quote-unquote last hurrahs and there's no guarantee with Oligon Solskjaer can charge that we're going to win anything and even if we are you would imagine we need to sign a lot of other quality players of his caliber in order to put us in contention which again with the owners that we have at the moment that isn't something that you could take for granted and think it's going to generally actually happen so that's the only thing i'd really be concerned about and then of course in the euros rafael rafael ran fair, fair enough he was playing alongside i'm just going to rafael rafael so i'll keep getting stumbling rafael ran alongside kim pembe was pretty awful i thought i thought kim pembe don't get me wrong he's the kind of defender he reminds me a little bit of Mikel Silvestre at united back in the day he kind of 
inspires um he doesn't inspire confidence right he makes you panic like sort of in the phil jones kind of quality or thing where he can have his good games but he can make anybody panic and maybe rafa rafa Varane, sorry again his name was sort of thrown off his kind of game by playing alongside kim Bembe. but i didn't think he looked that impressive at all playing out um from defense or even defending one-on-ones i just didn't think he looked that impressive and something that I would have seen or that would have made more sense, especially long term, or especially immediate and long term, I would have thought it would have made more sense for United to go for like a Sergio Ramos who can't get me wrong, he's older, he's only he's thirty five. He's obviously trying to get a last payday, but somebody that may, could still do a job, I feel like, at this level. And he's got the personality and the kind of aggression needed to really kind of revamp that defense, make it a little bit mean, make it a little bit aggressive, make it a little bit lean, mean, whatever it may be. And then you sign him for a couple of years. And then if you want to sign, like, who's that defender for playing for Lille? Is it Sven Botman or something? One of those, like, up-and-coming defenders that you got your eye on. You can then have those guys as, like, a long-term plan. But then for the immediate seat, in order to kind of get a trophy in the cabinet and ensure that you have your defenders learning from some of the, one of the best defenders in, you know, in the history of the game, it would have made more sense for us to go for a Sergio Ramos as opposed to, like, a Rafa Varane, I think because I just don't trust this coaching team or this coaching setup to kind of bring the best out of him or to utilize him in the best way. And I think having the midfield that you have at Real Madrid playing in front of you as a defender is completely different to coming at United and having to play behind, you know, having McFred playing in front of our defenders and our defenders playing in front of the goalkeeper. It's just that whole combination, that whole core of the team doesn't necessarily reflect the qualities that Rafa Vernovic is used to at Real Madrid. And then, of course, the salary... Is he going to come in and command like, you know, crazy weekly wage, which isn't none of our issue, none of our problem as fans, because, you know, who cares? But in terms of, of upsetting the harmony of the group and just creating unnecessary problems, if he doesn't end up being a good uh, investment or signing, having referee come in and command a wage of like 300,000 a week plus would just completely mess the whole situation up because we've got, you know, players like Martial and stuff on 150. We've got players like um, Bruno Fernandes probably on like 200 or something per week. If he's playing to the level that he played at in the beginning of last season and he replicates it again, he could be in a position where he's like, hold on, I'm contributing way more to this team than this guy is. Why is he on 300 and I'm on 200? And I've been here a year longer. You've seen what I can do. So it's just unnecessary, those kind of signings, because I feel like they just sometimes cause more harm than good. And then also, especially when you've got such a well-oiled proven winner in Sergio Ramos on the table I know he's 35 maybe for 33 it'll be different um you know but still I still think that would have been maybe the better sign to go for a long term now who knows maybe Rafa Ryan comes in and he's the perfect mold perfect partner for Harry Maguire and all this stuff doesn't matter but it's still concerning and on the other side of things I think for fans of um United and in general people that are just super keen on Oli Gonzalez as a manager and they call them um Oli sexuals on the timeline I just think now if we do end up signing, we're kind of so far haven't guaranteed, we haven't confirmed Jaden Sancho, but by all accounts, he's got his medical done. He's on holiday at Rashford at the moment. So more likely than not, he's a United player. Then you've got um, Rafa Verm being signed, maybe a midfielder, maybe not. Who knows if Pogba stays a defensive midfielder I'd like to join that wouldn't matter about Pogba then because you can then push him up further the pitch. It would mean that, especially if we finish second last year, the general way forward or a general way to gauge our improvement over the season would be either to finish with a higher points tally or to finish higher in the table, right? That would be where you'd say, okay, this is a clear improvement. If we can't have a higher points tally, if we can't finish second and, and win the uh, finish first sorry, and win the league, or dare I say win a European trophy or another domestic trophy, then people have to really start looking at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and wondering whether or not he's good enough for the job. I personally have never really been the biggest fan of him. I definitely do think he's done a lot of good in terms of um, reviving and restoring the harmony at the club post Mourinho. We've seen how toxic he can be as an influence. Um, you know, his ongoing sort of like verbal war with Luke Shaw that doesn't really make any sense, but hey, 
but so he's a good manager in that, in that sense. But in terms of being the person to take us to the next level in terms of winning trophies, um, potentially winning the league, he's just not the guy. And that's okay. You're allowed to be a person. You're allowed to be a coach that's good enough to take a team to a certain level. And then after that period of time, another top coach comes in and takes them to the next. Similar to what happened with you know Frank Lampard at Chelsea, right? He was saying at the time when he um, signed at Chelsea and they signed all those players that that Chelsea team couldn't be challenging for the league and couldn't do this, couldn't do that. Um, he obviously got fired, I think, when... And Chelsea were out of the top five and then towards the end of the season Thomas Tuchel ends up winning the Champions League with that same Chelsea team and ends up finishing third so it goes to prove that top class managers do make a difference as much as some you know donut fans would like to say managers are overrated their influence overrated don't really matter they do matter like I think Housen's a big Stephen Housen from um, Trafford Paddock's a big guy that uses one of the bigger guys that says that on these platforms um that managers aren't that important they don't really make much of a difference it's just it's obviously not true we've got demonstrable um, evidence to show that especially just anecdotal evidence from just last season alone with Thomas Tuchel so my line in the sand will be if Oligon Solskjaer can't win a trophy or finish at a higher points tally or position in the league which effectively will mean league champions then he has to get sacked he has to um, with this level of investment in the team and he's not able to kind of bring home any trophies, any silverware. There is no way, other way forward because I think most people, actual sensible fans, have always said from the very, very beginning that he's the kind of coach that needs signings, right? He can't necessarily coach a team into being champions. He's not going to be able to do what Klopp did at Liverpool, right? Where he's been able to take fairly mediocre players outside of some of his special stars and make them league champions. That's not what Solskjaer can do. He's a good man manager, he's good at cajoling people, obviously positive influence on some of the young guys, but in terms of being that tactical coaching maverick kind of guy, that's just not his game. And that's what we need in the going forward, yeah, um, to actually win a league, league title, especially when you look at the other top quality managers in the league, like Pep, like Klopp, like Thomas Tuchel. It just doesn't seem, for all the sense in the world, I just can't see a scenario where Solskjaer somehow finishes the season ahead of those three guys. It just doesn't make any sense with the CVs that they have, with the experience that they have, with the evidence that we've seen of what they can do. It just doesn't make any sense why he'd finish ahead of them just with players alone. And if it does happen, then that would throw out all the assertions in the world with top teams needing to have top coaches. Because what we'll see, if that's the case, that you don't need top team, top coaches, you don't need top managers when you got a top team. You just need to have really, really good players. Um, and I don't think that's the case. I don't think Bayern Munich could just, you know, hire flipping. AD Bufroid and still win um, the Bundesliga. I don't think that's possible. I think you do need, I think this proved with um, when Kovac was the manager for, for Bayern Munich and they weren't playing one and he was promptly fired. You can't just have good players and win and they just figure it out on the pitch. You need to have good direction and explanation and coaching from the coach or from the manager itself going downwards and then hopefully then the players can then kind of, you know, uh, kind of put all those training things into all those coaching methods and whatever into practice when they're obviously playing the game itself so that's the hope going forward um you never know with united things could end up going completely different than what i would have hoped it would be but you know we hope we really really do hope and then the other bit of news we've got here concerning united there was this the declare or oh, announce the news of a uh, coaching staff being added to Oli's coaching team called Eric Ramsey who's a former Chelsea coach he's joined to do first team coaching um, he'll work one-on-one -on -one with individual players and also take ownership over training on the side set plays Solskjaer says as I quote we've been fortunate enough to convince Eric Ramsey to come and join the best club in the world and in the country he's a very highly rated coach who is going to be working with individuals and in charge of set plays as well so it's good to see don't get me wrong but similar to the John Murta when Darren Fletcher appointments and being director of football at the club, it just feels like a year too late or a couple of years too late. This is something that a lot of fans who are even critical of Oligar and Solskjaer were crying out for in the beginning of saying, hey, don't get me wrong. If this guy is your dude and you want to kind of go back to the United way, you're kind of addicted to this whole nostalgia thing and the legend of Solskjaer and what he meant as a player. And you're really pinning your hopes on him being the person that's going to get us back to our rightful place at the top of the league then give him all the tools necessary for him to win.
win you know give him the best coaches give him the best players and it felt as if the coaching staff wise he was happy with the Mike feelings and all these other donuts that he had around him but there wasn't necessarily experienced like high level coaches that could add to what he does and what he's obviously said in interviews recently I remember he says that he's not a manager or a coach that's doing training right he kind of likes to um kind of uh, give those tasks to his other coaches in his coaching setup which is fine a bit concerning a bit weird but you know he kind of that's the sort of uh, method that he wants to approach you know being a football manager no problem but then you can't do that with the likes of Mike Phelan right you can't do that with um, Kieran McKenna with Michael Carrick right these guys aren't top level coaches in their own right either from what we've seen so far they don't you know they're not people or coaches that you're seeing other teams around the world clamoring to sign up and get involved in their coaching setup so you would imagine with somebody like on Oligon Solskjaer with the lack of experience that coaching at the highest level outside of obviously Mulder that he'd want to get the best coaches in possible to give him the best chance of winning a trophy but he thought he could on his own if we could work it out it didn't obviously work and now the good thing is that he's obviously seen it hasn't worked as you know with the team he has at the moment so he's added to it regardless if this guy is 29 and he happens to be Kieran McKenna's friend from university you know whatever it's a bit of nepotism involved in there I don't care the fact is they've got another coach in who can help out with things that they feel like they're missing out on and hopefully we see a difference. Hopefully we see a change. Hopefully we see it being a positive influence for the players themselves going forward. But like I said, I just feel like it's two or three years too late. Um, this is something that should have been done from the very beginning, from the very onset to improve. It should have been something that could have been added a lot to what we already have. If we finish second with that, that joke team of a coaching staff, just imagine where we would have finished with actual high quality coaches that have been there, done that, adding to whatever magic they've been able to make at Old Trafford at the moment I don't really know but hey good good nonetheless to see we have another coach on the books and hopefully he's going to be a positive influence going forward one can only hope one can only hope